think one step is to help the CIO to regain that title. Today, the CIO is a chief infrastructure officer, not a chief information officer. And we have to help them to regain their title and you know, really managing the, the information within their companies and not only kind of managing infrastructure, spending all the money, uh, uh, throwing money, I would say, in managing those uh, 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 legacy systems. We have to help them really trying to, to get out and, and start to think about the future, start to think about how to manage those data, whatever is the data, big or not. I think that it's very important that they have to think now about how to take care, uh, you know, advantage and, and of all those data and how to help to transform their companies. And as of today, that's not the case. A lot of CIO I know are spending all their time you know, trying to manage systems or, and trying to minimize the risk, meaning that they don't want to take too much risk because they are so much afraid to change anything in their system because they're afraid that that system will fail. So we have to help them to, again, regain that title and became the CIO, the Chief Information Officer, and not the Chief Infrastructure Officer. So I think that's, that's one of the big challenges of the cloud. Until we reach the point where do CIO are real CIO, we will still face many, many issues because they won't be ready to help their companies to transform. Uh, let's turn to the audience for a few minutes. Any questions out here? Comments? Everybody seems to be hungry. OK. Sorry. Okay, so the question is how do we forecast uh, banks and financial institutions adopting the cloud because of their conservative nature? Yeah. They don't. <laughs> Essentially, they don't. Again, this is a again, classic disruption from below. You don't enter the market from the top, you enter from the bottom, and it has to grow. It's, I would say it, takes, it will take another five years before they start adopting it. We are starting to see some of those banks uh, uh, you know, uh, trying to get more involved in the way they manage their customers. So it's not necessarily about managing their core data and their core information, but managing the relationship with people who are kind of interacting with, with the bank. Uh, so we, we start to see that, um, but obviously managing the core data, uh, we are still far from, from being there, obviously. In our case, when we process the data and extract some information from there, we have a couple of cases of working with the banks where they, of course, give, give us unanimized logs uh, of transactions, and we just tell them the credit ratings of the people or just advises who should switch to, other, another, to their competitors and so on. So it's, it's all doable and in our area you just give your logs which are easily unanimizable, just coded, and are processed and you get the result. So it's, it's a service, it's a cloud-based service, cloud. Francisca from DLD. I have a question to Jiyoung because I talked to my CIO <laughs> and I wanted to have the Salesforce uh, cloud and I think it's also a lot about communication because the cloud is also by CIOs most seen for like being an external drive more than an intelligence and a service oriented thing and also in all these um, let's say panels we always talk about as if the cloud were just like something where you put your data but not about like cost and efficiency and that might to be changed but also of course one big issue is um, security and I think it's a very German issue and you were mentioning it earlier but I don't really see I mean also, I'm also afraid and many Germans are after NSA and PRISM and all that uh, that data might be misused by governmental or um, any other hackers or whatever, and I think that's a concern to be taken seriously. Yeah. The security issues, as I said, are easily handled. You just need to encrypt your data at the source. And in our case, do not give us the raw data, please. Just it. Yes. <laughs> we, we are ready to process any data uh, which are encrypted. I mean, the, the source, we, we don't need to, who is the person who created this line of, uh, of log. We just look at the logs in general, 
look at billions of lines in the log and tell you that this and that line should be take, taken care of. This is a bad credit history or this is somebody you can upsell or whatever. And you just look into the data. You don't need to know whose data the, it is. And yes, if data are encrypted at the source, you just process it and give the result and then they are decrypted back. So no, that, that's a good point. Obviously, trust is a, is a, is a key element of cloud adoptions. And um, at Salesforce, cloud, I mean, trust is the first priority. I mean, that's trust, and then you have the rest. Uh, we even have, uh, if, you, if you go to trust.salesforce.com, you will see you know, whatever happened to Salesforce. We are very transparent about uh, what we do and how we do it. Um, so I encourage everyone here to, to take a look. But yes, definitely trust is, is, a, is a, one of the key concerns. Uh, obviously, you know, without the trust, there is no way the cloud will rise and, 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 and growth. So trust is definitely one of the key uh, um, priorities for us. Other questions? Hi, my question is to Arkady. Uh, how do you see the future of Yandex Islands platform? Yandex Islands? Okay, it's... There will be no clouds above our islands. <laughs> uh, uh, tell, yeah. tell us a little bit about what that, what that okay, is. It's, it, it has no relationship to, to the to topic of the, of the discussion, okay. I think. Uh, because, if, yeah, it, islands is, is just a concept of, uh, for, for the better representation of the search results when... Okay. When so can we if, we, if we, if we can, can we take that, that one offline? Okay. Other questions? Okay, please. So, what is the why of the way of the end of the day, which are the use of the time of the penetration of the investment? What can we do? So, the question is what is the wild west of big data, and what, what industries, what sectors haven't been penetrated yet? I believe that any industry could be improved by better data analysis. And we, we have dozens of different examples from you know, aerospace to credit organizations to the rest. But the most interesting which you can talk about is something from the case when we helped to statistically prove the beauty maison decay in, at CERN, uh, the physical uh, institution, France, uh, French Swiss. Uh, and I, I think the, the areas like it could be anything from medicine to uh, to to saving of uh, energy, whatever, whatever you 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 believe is best selling, you can say that big data could help there. Uh, okay, well, just one example of where big data analysis works in medicine. There is. Um, I just read an article uh, about uh, people trying to get a, a back channel from a patient in, patients in coma. There are very rare, rare cases when people are locked in. They cannot communicate back, but they are alive there. And there is a ways to scan their brains and to, to get back the signal. And machine learning is the key here. One key is how to, to, to get the signal. Another, another key thing there is to recognize the signal. And just imagine how much it does for those poor pure persons. They, they, they become life, uh, alive again. Uh, and this is a, a good example of application of big data analysis or machine learning regulation. Well, the question, what could be served by big data? So like, what? I would rephrase it. Instead of asking what could be served in, by big data in the future, I would say what is the most served right now? So, because essentially it's not implemented broadly. What's served right now more or less is advertising and I would say shopping, online advertising, online shopping. Those two are kind of getting it. But if you move further away from those two industries, it gets less and less and less because it's it, usually people continue in the business as usual, unless they have to change. And understanding that uh, you can get a competitive advantage by implementing some uh, 
data mining and analysis does not come instantly. People have to see their competitors implementing and, and then getting advantage from that. So the two industries, again, shopping, advertising, maybe travel a little bit. Everything else is just wild west. Anything can like, go anywhere and you can find uh, plenty of opportunities. But again, this should probably go like everybody, everybody. In, I've seen some people trying to implement big data. Everybody wants to go from the top. Everybody says, well, who needs big data? Let's find every large enterprise. And then they go to those large enterprises and try to sell. And it's very tough sell because they don't see need for that. Although they do have the data, it's very hard to sell to them. But somewhere below, there is a tier which is ready. So those who go to that tier will be the first to get to those large enterprises. Yeah, I think that is also tied to, again, to the source of those data. If you look at all those companies, like in automotive, for instance, you have some companies already doing a good job in kind of trying to capture, you know, live data from, from cars. Uh, OnStars is one, for instance. They are doing it for forever. Uh, but there is still a lot of work to do to be able to capture, you know, live information from many systems in a car, for instance. But I'm just giving you that example as an example, but it's true for many, many industries. You have to be able to capture all those data beyond you know, what you can easily capture. Uh, uh, so obviously, you know, online, it's kind of already there. You, the data is flowing around, so it's just a way of capturing that data and making sure that you get sense out of it. Um, but in many, many industries, capturing those data is quite complicated because it, imp it implies to change a little bit your, your processes. It implies to change the way you build up you know, uh, uh, those different objects connected. Uh, so whatever is the object, so it's very hard because it, may, it means that you, you have to change the way you produce your, your product. Um, so for instance, in the automotive industry, again, I think that companies such as Tesla is kind of disrupting a little bit of that uh, uh, industry because by design, their cars are connected. So they are connected, everything in, within the car is connected. That, so that changes a little bit the, the game and a bunch of you know, actors in this industry are going to uh, kind of uh, suffer. Of, uh, of that because they won't be prepared neither ready to be able to do the same because just their process, their factories are not uh, uh, built up to, to integrate that kind of connectivity. So again, the, the, the fact that uh, you have to be connected to, to get advantage of, uh, uh, of big data and be able to get the source of that information is critical and, and I can tell you that the, the Wild West is wherever you have those companies who are struggling in, in gathering the data. Terrific. Any other questions? All right. One o'clock. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you all. Stay where you are. There's another a very interesting fireside chat. It's going to happen right now. It's going to be brief and very interesting. I'd like to invite to the stage Mary Brand, Managing Director of Google Israel, Greece, and Sub-Saharan Africa, who will be hosting the next fireside chat. Mayor, are you here?